welcome you all myself dr n r devi assistant professor department of physics axilim college velu in this session we are going to learn about optical fiber communication now we are going to see about introduction about optical fiber communication and optical fiber fiber optic communication is a method of transmitting information from one place to another by sending pulses of infrared light through an optical fiber the light is a form of carrier wave that is modulated to carry information soon after the discovery of lasers some experiments were carried out on propagation of information through light waves in open atmosphere a light beam acting as a carrier wave is capable of carrying more information than radio waves and microwaves because of its high frequency due to atmospheric conditions like rain fog etc the efficient communication is disturbed hence to have an efficient communication system the light which carries the information requires a guiding media known as optical fibers thus fiber optics it is branch of optics which deals with the transmission and the reception of light waves using optical fibers which acts as a guiding media a communication system that uses light as the carrier of information from a source to a destination through a guided fiber cable made up of glass or plastic is called an optical fiber communication system the information carrying capacity of a communication system is directly proportional to its bandwidth the wider the bandwidth the greater is its information carrying capacity like frequencies used in fiber optic systems are between 10 power 4 and 4 into 10 power 14 hertz as the result they have higher information carrying capacity optical fiber a fiber optic cable also known as an optical fiber cable is an assembly similar to an electrical cable but containing one or more optical fibers that are used to carry light The optical fiber elements are typically individually coated with plastic layers and contain in a protective tube suitable for the environment where the cable is used. Core and a gliding layer selected for total internal reflection due to the difference in the refractive index between the two. An optical fiber consists of a central core glass surrounded by a cladding which is of slightly lower refractive index than core it is made up of transparent dielectrics sio2 glass or plastics in practical fibers the cladding is used coated with a layer of a acrylate polymer or polyimide this coating protects the fiber from but does not contribute optical waveguide properties individual coated fibers or fibers formed into ribbons or bundles then have a tough resin buffer layer or core tube extruded around them to form the cable core several layers of protective sheathing depending on the application are added to form the cable the protective layer is used so has to make the optical cable to withstand for hard pulling bending sketching rolling etc optical fiber is light in weight smaller in size and is flexible so that it can bend to any position it is non conductive non radiative and non inductive it has high bandwidth and a low loss and no internal noise cross tacks the structure giving the optical fiber we have core material is made up of silica it is surrounded by 
cladding and it is surrounded by silicone coating and then it is surrounded by buffer jacket and stain member and black polyurethane outer jacket principle and propagation of light in optical fiber to consider the propagation of light within an optical fiber utilizing the ray theory model it is necessary to take account of the refractive index of the dielectric medium the refractive index of a medium is defined as the ratio of the velocity of light in a vacuum to the velocity of light in the medium light rays travels more slowly in optically dense medium than in one that is this dense when light travels into a different medium the speed of the light changes and the light is refracted when light travels from a denser medium example glass to a less dense medium example air the speed of the light increases and the light refracts away from the normal the angle of refraction is greater than the angle of incidence as the angle of incidence is increased the angle of refraction also increases at a certain angle of incidence the light will refract at 90 degrees and it travel along the boundary between the two media this angle of incidence is called the critical angle if the angle of incidence is increased further so that it is greater than the critical angle the light will be totally internally reflected the conditions required for total internal reflection to occur are the light must be traveling from a more dense medium into a less dense medium example from glass to air the angle of incidence must be greater than the critical angle the diagram shows the light refracting from glass into air where the angle of refraction pi 2 is greater than the angle of incidence pi 1 the diagram shows light hitting the glass air boundary at an angle that is equal to the critical angle that is pi i is equal to pi c the diagram shows the light hitting the glass air boundary at an angle that is greater than the critical angle that is pi i is greater than the pi c this is the mechanism by which light at a sufficiently shallow angle may be considered to propagate down an optical fiber with low loss the ray has an angle of incidence pi at the interface which is greater than the critical angle and is reflected at the same angle to the normal light infrared getting in at one end undergoes repeated total internal reflection and it emerges at the other end critical angle is calculated from snell's law of refraction sin pi c is equal to n2 by n1 acceptance angle and the numerical aperture it is useful to enlarge upon the geometric optics approach with reference to light rays entering the fiber since only rays with the incident angle greater than the critical angle at the core cladding interface or transmitted by total internal reflection acceptance angle is defined as the maximum angle to the axis at which the light ray may enter it to the fiber in order to get propagated numerical aperture the numerical aperture of a fiber is a measure of the light collecting ability of the fiber The diagram shows the acceptance angle theta a when launching light into an optical fiber. The incidence angle with this uh, within this conical of angle will be propagated through the optical fiber and it will be totally internally reflected. The numerical aperture will be calculated from sine of the acceptance angle that is sin theta a is equal to root of n1 square minus n2 square. types of optical fibers based on materials modes and refractive indices based on optical fibers material number of modes refractive index profile it is classified depends upon the material it is made up of that is glass fiber and plastic fiber and it depends on number of modes it is classified into single mode fiber and multi mode fiber 
and it depends on refractive index profile. It is classified into step index fiber, graded index fiber. In step index fiber, we have single mode step index fiber and a multi mode step index fiber. In graded index fiber, we have only multi mode graded index fiber. Based on materials in which the fibers made, it is classified into two types: glass fibers. If the fibers are made up of mixture of metal oxides, silica glasses, it is made up by one for of the following combinations of core and cladding. Core made up of SiO2, cladding P2O3, SiO2. Core GeO2, SiO2, and cladding SiO2. Plastic fibers. If the fibers are made up of plastics. Which can be handled without any care due to its toughness and durability. It is made up by any one of the following combinations of core and cladding: core polymethyl methacrylate, cladding copolymer, core polystyrene, cladding methyl methacrylate. Modes of propagation. Mode is one which describes the nature of propagation of electromagnetic waves in a waveguide. Light propagates as electromagnetic waves through an optical fiber. All waves having any directions above the critical angle will be trapped within the fiber due to total internal reflection. However, all such waves do not propagate through the fiber. Only certain ray directions are allowed to propagate. The allowed directions corresponding to the modes of the fiber. Moves can be visualized as the possible number of paths of light in an optical fiber. The paths are all zigzag paths excepting the axial direction. According, light rays traveling through a fiber are classified as axial rays or zigzag rays or skew rays. As the ray gets repeatedly reflected at the walls of the fiber, Phase shift occurs. Waves traveling along the certain zigzag paths will be in phase and intensify. Waves traveling along certain other paths will be out of phase and diminish due to destructive interference. The light rays path along which the waves are in phase inside the fiber are called modes. Based on the modes of propagation, the fibers are classified into two types. Single mode fibers and the multi mode fibers. Single mode fibers. It has very small core diameter so that it can allow only one mode of propagation. The cladding diameter must be very large compared to core diameter. Made up of from doped silica and always be step index. Because of high bandwidth, they are used in long haul communication systems. Multi mode fiber. The multimode fibers are useful in manufacturing both for step index and graded index fibers. The multimode fibers are made by multi component glass compounds such as glass, clad, glass, silica, glad, silica, doped silica, etc. Here, the core diameter is very large compared to single mode fibers so that it can allow many modes to propagate through it. And hence called as multi mode fibers. The cladding diameter is also larger than the diameter of the single mode fibers. Fibers, because of its less bandwidth, it is very useful in short haul communication systems. Based on the variation in the refractive index of core and the cladding, the fibers are classified into two types single mode step index fiber and the multi mode step index fiber. Single mode step index fiber. A single mode step index fiber consists of a very thin core of uniform refractive index surrounded by a cladding of refractive index lower than that of core. The refractive index abruptly changes at the core cladding boundary. Here, the refractive index of air, cladding, and core varies step by step, and hence it is called as step index fiber. Light travels along a side path along the axis only. So, zero order modes is supported by single mode fiber. These fibers are ideally suited for high bandwidth and medium and long haul applications 
using single mode injection laser sources. These are the structure for standard single mode sepindex fiber. So structure mode field diameter 7 to 11 micrometer typically between 9 and 10 micrometer at the 1.31 micrometer wavelength. Cladding diameter generally 125 micrometer. Coating diameter 200 to 300 micrometer. <laughs> Multimode step index fiber. The multimode step index fiber consists of core of uniform refractive index surrounded by a cladding of refractive index lower than that of the core. The refractive index abruptly changes at the core cladding boundary. The core is of large diameter. Light follows zigzag paths inside the fiber. Many such zigzag paths of propagation is permitted in multimode fiber. The numerical aperture of a multimode fiber is larger as the core diameter of the fiber is larger. These fibers are best suited for short haul, limited bandwidth and relatively low cost applications. The core diameter is varies from 100 to 300 micrometer. Cladding diameter is varied from 140 to 400 micrometer. Buffer jacket diameter is varies from 400 to 1000 micrometer. And a numerical aperture is varies from 0.16 to 0.5. Here the refractive index is varies step by step. These are the structure of standard multimode step index fiber. These are the diagram which shows the propagation of light in single mode step index fiber and multi mode step index fiber. Greater index multi mode fiber. Greater index fiber in one in which refractive index varies radially, decreasing continuously in a parabolic manner from the maximum value of N1 at the center of the core to a constant value of N2 at the core cladding interface. Here, the refractive index of the core varies radially from the axis of the fiber. The refractive index of core is maximum along the fiber axis and it gradually decreases. Thus, it is called as greater index fiber. Here, the refractive index becomes minimum at the core cladding interface. However, the refractive index of the cladding is constant in the case of greater index fiber. Hence, the nature of the refractive index of the core is somewhat parabolic. Although these fibers were initially used for medium haul, they are now best suited to short haul and medium to high bandwidth applications using either incoherent or coherent multimode sources, LEDs or injection laser diodes respectively, which shows the diameter 50 to 400 micrometer and a cladding diameter 125 to 150 micrometer and a coating diameter 200 to 300 micrometer, 400 to 1000 micrometer for buffer jacket diameter. Numerical aperture is varies from 0.2 to 0.3 in glass multimode greater index fiber. Ray propagation in greater index fiber. In greater index fiber, light rays travel at different speeds in different parts of the fiber because the refractive index varies throughout the fiber. Near the outer edge, the refractive index is lower. As a result, rays near the outer edge travel faster than the rays at the center of the core. Because of this, rays arrive at the end of the fiber at approximately at the same time. In effect, light rays arrive at the end of the fiber or continuously refocused as they travel down the fiber. Hence, the light on traveling gets continuously refracted and bends. Thus, in case of greater index multimode fiber, the light rays do not propagate by following a straight line. Rather, they allow parabolic path due to non-uniformity in the refractive index of the core. This diagram shows the ray transmitter in multimode greater index fiber. In fiber optical communication system, this is a black diagram of optical fiber communication system. Then in this we have the three session, transmitter part, repeater part that is information channel and receiver part. In this the message origin is it's given to the modulator. Then it is given to the carrier source 
then it is given to the channel coupler. From this channel coupler, it is given to the information channel. Here we have the repeater session such as the optical fiber. Then in here, receiver session, we have optical detector and that is given to amplifier and thus it is processing. Finally, we get the message output. The message origin. Generally, message origin is from a transducer that converts a non-electrical message into an electrical signal. Common examples include microphones for converting sound waves into currents and video cameras for converting images into current. For data transfer between computers, the message is already in electrical form. Modulator it has two main functions. It converts the electrical message into proper format. It impresses the signal onto a wave generated by the carrier source. Two distinct categories of modulation are used, that is analog and digital modulation. Carrier source. Carrier source generates the wave on which the information is transmitted. This wave is called the carrier. For fiber optic system, a laser diode or a light emitting diode is used. They can be called as optic oscillators. They provide stable single frequency waves with sufficient power for long distance propagation. Channel coupler. Coupler feeds the power into information channel. For an atmospheric optic system, the channel coupler is a lens used for collimating the light emitted by the source and directing this light towards the receiver. The coupler must efficiently transfer the modulated light beam from the source to the optic fiber. The channel coupler design is an important part of fiber optic system because of possibility of high losses. Information channel. The information channel is the path between the transmitter and the receiver. In fiber optic communications, a glass or plastic fiber is the channel. Desirable characteristics of the information channel include low attenuation and a large light acceptance cone angle. Optical amplifiers boost the power levels of weak signals. Amplifiers are needed in very long lengths to provide sufficient power to the receiver. Repeaters can be used only for digital systems. They convert weak and distorted optical signals to electrical ones and then generate the original digital pulse trains for further transmission. Another important property of the information channel is the propagation time of the waves traveling along it. A signal propagating along a fiber normally contains a range of fiber optic frequencies and it divides its power along the several ray paths. This results in a distortion of the propagation signal in a digital system, this distortion appears as a spreading and a deforming of the pulses. The spreading is so great that adjacent pulses begin to overlap and become unrecognizable as separate bits of information. Optical detector. The information begin transmitter is directed by detector. In the fiber system, the optic wave is converted into an electric current by a photo detector. The current developed by the detector is proportional to the power in the incident optic wave. Detector output current contains the transmitted information. This detector output is then filtered to remove the constant bias and then amplified. The important properties of photo detectors are small size, economic, long life, low power consumption, high sensitivity to optic signals, and fast response to quick variations in the optic power. Signal processing includes filtering amplification. Proper filtering maximizes the ratio of signal to unwanted power. For a digital system, decision circuit is an additional block. The bit error rate, BER, should be very small for quality communications. Signal processing includes filtering amplification. Message output, the electrical form of the message emerging from the signal processor is transformed into sound wave or visual image. Sometimes these signals are directly usable 
when computers or other machines are connected through a fiber system. Advantages of optical fiber communication over radio wave communication. Optical fibers have largely replaced copper wire communications in core networks in the developed world because of its advantages over electrical transmission. Light waves have higher frequency compared to the radio wave frequency and microwave frequency and hence has wider bandwidth so that large number of signals can be transmitted simultaneously. Since it is dielectric waveguide, the optical signals are not affected by any electrical signals suitable for any environmental conditions. Easy maintenance, longer life, economical and high quality signal transmission are the additional features of optical fiber communication system. Applications of optical fiber communications Fiber optic cables find any uses in a wide variety of industries and applications. Some uses of fiber optic cables include its uses as a light guides, imaging tools and also as lasers for surgeries. It used as hydrophones for seismic waves and sonar, as wiring in aircraft, submarines and other vehicles and also for field networking. And also it is used for data transmission. It is laid and used for transmitting and receiving purposes. Used to connect users and servers in a variety of network settings and help increase the speed and accuracy of data transmission. Used for imaging in hard to reach areas as wiring where EMI is an issue. As sensory devices to make temperature, pressure and other measurements. And as wiring in automobiles and in industrial settings. In broadcast cable companies are using a fiber optic cables for wiring CATV, HDTV, internet, video, on demand and other applications. Fiber optic cables are used for lighting and imaging and as sensors to measure and monitor a vast array of variables. Fiber optic cables are also used in research and development and testing across all the above mentioned industries. Applications of optical fiber in telephone systems, in submarine cable networks, it is used in data link for computer networks, CATV systems, and also it is used in CCTV surveillance cameras, and for connecting fire, police, and other emergency services, and also used in hospitals, schools, and traffic management systems. They have many industry uses and also used for heavy duty constructions. These are the references for my lecture. Thanks for watching. Thank you.